Ladies and gentlemen, spies and pyros, welcome. It is me, Get a Whale, impersonating cold, and it is nine and out. And it is uh, week five edition, I guess, of nine and out. And joining me live here in the studio, all in different rooms, Turbo Cop. We have Miss Kip. We have DJ. We have uh, our guest, Mr. Hine. And that's who we're going to be talking to today. And uh, filling in for cold today, we have the fantastic Pretender. Thank you again. Uh, this, by the way, this is episode six, Return of the Hind, or Return of the Jedi, or whatever comes after six. I don't know which one. I like it. <laughs> it works out. So, yeah. So uh, where uh, where we want to start, gang? So uh, I guess we can do a little bit of, uh, well, first, the big news of the week uh, in terms of Platinum is that Dag Party uh, gave UBS a free win for, the, uh, for week five. Uh, Stag Party disbanded. Um, I have an official quote here. Um, essentially, the, the gist of it is that they lost their demo, they lost their heavy, uh, and then a couple other players didn't want to play afterwards, so you get this kind of domino effect, and the team kind of fell apart. However, um, most, of the, most of the players just still want to keep playing. They're going to be going down to gold teams. I'm sure we're going to be seeing some more of them in Platinum, <coughs> so uh, we're happy to have Stag Party, and uh, it's unfortunate, but there we go. We're down from 10 to 9 again. Ooh. One fewer team. One fewer team. Uh, Maybe so someone's we... going to have a bye week, too. And I'm not sure who it's going to be yet. Yeah. Nine teams. That's the, the magic number, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Sixes and Highlander. Mm -hmm. um, do we want to touch on then what happened in the week that was then before we start talking to this bearded gentleman? Sure. So the week that happened this week was the uh, process week, which I don't think... Um, not a lot of people, I think, like process. You guys before the show were talking about you didn't like casting uh, process, possibly. No, I don't like casting it either. Uh, kind of, uh, the matches haven't been amazing, I don't think. Yeah, there's a lot Platt, of holding was, for sure. Um, five zero, five zero, five zero, and then five one. Five. Yep. So um, that one, that the five one was Menace Society and Gentlemen's Club, which was a good game. That we did cast Uncover on XTV, but it was still kind of rolly at times. And then, of course, you can tell with the five O's that those were definite rolls. So I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure where process fits in with everything, but uh, maybe the matchups weren't as good as they could have been this this week for Platt. But I don't know. That's probably true. Uh, Blunderful did play play against DRS, and they got they got pretty crushed there. And uh... They played well, uh, actually. I have inside info on that, that they actually played better than what the score uh, demonstrates. Um, really? I spoke to Mustard yeah. about that, and they played really good. BFL had Zalox playing, who is, oh. <laughs> by, by choice, not their starting demo. I don't know why, but uh, he's their backup yeah. demo still, but they played really well, apparently. Uh, just it, That's the way that the score came out. And so maybe that's the, the case with some of these matches this week, too. Maybe they were closer than the scores indicate but definitely that one i got firsthand uh knowledge that bfl wasn't quite trounced they played um at their best they Ooh. played probably the best they have all season yep Zalox and is uh, very strong mm -hmm. oh Zalox? Zalox is a very strong demo the thing yep. is if you have Zalox on your team it is a very medic centered on demo feeling he wants at least 70 percent of the heals if he can but the good thing about it is he's a lot like Mustard, where when he gets those heals, you will see very good outcomes from it. Yeah. But it takes a whole team to beat a team like DRS, where everybody's pretty solid. Yeah. And that's what Mustard said, too, is that when Zalox plays with them, the whole team plays better. And I believe that, too. Yeah. Are you sure? I'm getting word from stream that Zalox is back up for Psyops. Oh, Psyops? Well, I don't know. I was talking to, uh, yeah. Well, Mustard was telling me something about Zalox. I got maybe mixed up. Maybe they're filling in. Maybe that's just a, a last minute uh, replacement for them. We'll have to go well, talk yeah, to Well, yeah, I guess you, he definitely told me, I'll check my Steam logs, but he was telling me about how Zalox was playing. I said, why isn't he the starter? And mm. he okay. didn't. Oh. He's not rostered on BFL. Just mm. looking at. Mm. So mm. the probably the biggest. Upset of the week has been uh, PsyOps uh, versus Murder Force. They 5-0'd uh, Murder Force. Uh, it's unfortunate uh, for Murder Force. They haven't been quite the, the powerhouse uh, everyone expected them to be at the beginning of the season. And we're already halfway through. We're, we're more than halfway through. 
Um, you know, like Electric Temptations is pretty well set, <clears throat> and Blunderfall is pretty much sitting at the bottom, and there's still a bunch of stuff in the middle. But uh, we could definitely uh, see like a team like Psyops like do really, really well coming uh, into the playoffs and get a really good seed. Yeah, that's, so this is the conversation. Mustard was doing two conversations with me at once. I'm looking at it now. Yes, Psyops, of course. <laughs> I'm the idiot of the show so far. But yes, 10 times better was Zalox. And uh, I know what I'm talking about, I, I promise. <laughs> I wouldn't exactly call it a huge upset just by the way I've seen both teams play. Because Death Force plays like they don't really have a goal in mind when they're playing. And that shows very, very clearly that they don't have a main caller. Now you switch over to PsyOps. You've got basically a full team that has played together quite a bit. Add on Tic Tac and a few of the other people. Milo's very strong. Mm -hmm. You get any of those guys on, they're going to be extremely explosive. Nico Jims, uh, I'm not sure if he's their starting engineer, but I know he's very aggressive. Mm -hmm. So they could do a lot of damage. So the DK match, DK ET? Yeah, it was DK versus uh, ET, and it was a uh, and it was five uh, zero. But you know, like looking like you know, super far into the season here. Uh, if I can get the match schedule real quick, we've got Borneo, um, the new Borneo. Uh, we've got Steel. Uh, everyone likes playing Steel, and everyone feels like that a fair match and the better team comes out on Steel. Um, and then you've got Swiftwater. Uh, it's okay. Map people are are kind of on the fence about it, but again, a pretty like a pretty decisive map I think overall. So you've really got like. You've got three good maps coming up here to like really decide the season, I think. So mm -hmm. that should be interesting. How would you yeah. like? So okay, Hein, if I'm like DK right now and I'm sitting like two three, like I had a good start at two one, and then I just lost my past two games. So how do you like come out of that like slump and like try and make yourself like better for the next couple of weeks here? Uh, it depends who they're playing next. I attacked every single week as if it could possibly be the, the game that changes everything. So okay. let's say I was going in and I was facing Gentleman's Club. You immediately know you're facing an incredibly stacked team. So you think, what is their weakest part? What is their strongest part? You attack both at the same time. You attack mm -hmm. mainly that they are a new team. They might not be as organized as they could be, which they, they are very organized. but you find their caller, take out their caller as much as possible. Is there anybody on the team that gets frustrated very easily and quickly? Kill him over and over as much as you can. <laughs> it it helps if they are the main caller. We used to do this back in season six to certain teams when we knew they had their main caller would get very furious. We would kill him over and over, and then a few people would taunt him and just Ooh. take it over the top. <laughs> and it was always... Warfare? Yeah, yeah, seriously. You, it's like trash talking in basketball. Basketball doesn't exist without trash talk. Bring up Reggie Miller, Michael Jordan, all those guys. You know they're very good, but you talk to the other guys that are on the team, they'll say they're assholes because all they did was trash talk. Huh. Now, we didn't we didn't exactly trash talk. We tried to just let our, our skill show it, but we would attack the people we knew had certain um, issues. And everybody does it. They might not consciously know it, but if you can kill somebody's caller, he's going to be trying to call from his death can. That's mm -hmm. not as strong as if he's alive. So you go for that. And you play up your advantages. So with DK, they've got Aegis, very strong. You play around him. You play around D-Flame if he's actually playing. Give everybody that can do... Do the damage. Give them all the heals that you can. Scout all the way. Get him to 185 as much as you can. I used to do that with all of our scouts in the past. Give it to the soldier before he jumps. Give him to 300. Just kind of understand what he's doing. Use distractions. Always use forked pushes. Especially on Borneo, you can do a few forked pushes. But process is the best one that you can do forked pushes on. So... Yeah. A ton of different things that you can do to exploit certain teams' strengths. It's no longer a strength. Yeah, you talk Take about strong. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt it. You're you're talking about strong callers, and so I think of uh, Skyrolla on MTS now, 
and they dropped theirs to GC. That was a 5-1. Uh, but Skyroll, uh, a real strong uh, caller, and MTS, a really great team. Um, we always drop the line, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. It seems like they can't quite put together the perfect seasons that they want. They'll make it to playoffs all the time, but GC picks one up off of them, 5-1 uh, last night, which we saw yep. right here. There are reasons. There's reason MCS hasn't always been on top. They definitely have the talent. Oh, yeah. Hard Blue is easily the best the best medic in Platinum. I think he's yep. always been the best. Yep. Uh, Skyroll is an incredibly good heavy. Yep. Spamfist, one of the top engineers. Noko, great spy. Backup Jiro, incredibly good spy. Katsy is terrifying. Is, uh, is Squid their scout still, or is it somebody else? Mm. Uh, I'm pretty sure Squid is their scout. Or, no, I, isn't it Enigma? No, it's. I guess GC. we can read it. Yeah, Enigma's it is GC, Enigma's. So. Oh, wait, scout wait. is incredibly strong. He's getting better and better. Panic is an incredibly good soldier. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, I think they've got two issues. They've got Skyrilla and Harblue. Harblue is one of the greatest callers in the game. Skyrilla is another good caller in the game. I've never played with him directly, but I know he is very good. He's very smart. Now, when you have two very strong callers on one team, you're sometimes going to conflict, especially when both of them are on heavy and mad. Hmm. The second thing is Platinum. Platinum plays it as if it is sixes. He goes yeah. very aggressively, and the thing is his team can't follow what he's doing because he's very aggressive, he's very skilled, but he's going to jump into six people and die. Yeah, That's what I remember. Hmm. Now... Skill alone, he's one of the best. Marissa's a very strong <clears throat> sniper. Yeah. They have everything it takes to be the champs. There's just something that's not quite clicking with them. Mm. And I'd have to really watch them a lot closer. Because they could have had it season eight. Yeah. It, it's you funny you mention time and time again. Mm. It's funny you mention the sixes thing. It's sorry again to, to cut you out, but with the sixes, we were seeing... GC playing it really sixes style last night. Obviously, process uh, at its heart is a sixes map, but Kozen would take. I don't know if you saw any of the match, but it was always sixes Ubers. Kozen would take the scout in first and ruin with them, and it was the scout demo and medic, and it was very sixes looking on both teams actually. A lot of those guys were sixes uh, players, but some of them figure out the Highlander a little more or maybe a little better than others, I guess. Yep. The scout Uber is something that we would always do with Ruin in the past, mm -hmm. just to get in an area and force the Uber. Yeah. We didn't really care if we killed a lot of them. It was more of a, we go in, force theirs, we back out. While they think we're regrouping, we just immediately push back in. Mm -hmm. It's a way to cut through a defense. You bring in your demo to try and force them to multi-Uber around. You got Enigma is amazing. Nothing wrong with that guy. You got Arthur very strong. He's smart enough that he knows that he's not getting the Uber, which is huge in Highlander, because mm -hmm. a lot of heavies just soak it up. They have they have a very strong team. It would be very difficult to beat this team, I would think. Yeah. But Steve C played happened. scout for uh, it was Steve C yep. for MTS last night. Oh right. Time. Steve C played the played the backup for them. And back on the NTS, uh, they're the two people they need to play uh, for two of their three games are uh, DRS and Psyops, uh, both of which uh, we've seen scrim they scrim those three teams like scream each other like all the time like a lot so that'll be a Play really good teams. game yeah um it looks like oh what are the top teams right now like on the so list in, in the rankings when you're when you're scrimmaging teams you always want to play the best because when you're mm -hmm. trying out a strategy you don't want to play a lower team and think oh this is amazing this is going to definitely work and then you play a good team you're like oh well this didn't work at all so you always want to try to play the best mm -hmm. every week yeah, uh, right now ET's at the top of the standings. They're five and zero. Gentlemen's yep. Club now tied with Psyops four and one. Uh, and Gentlemen's Club, we were talking a little bit, Hein, uh, some uh, few old teammates of yours. So maybe we can <laughs> talk now. Maybe for people who don't know who you are exactly, they don't know the name Hein. I'm sure they're out there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we could talk about maybe your history a bit and how you got into competitive TF2, maybe not going back any further than, you know, 2006 <laughs> or, or so, 2007, because I know there's a lot of, of history. But yeah, yeah, the the about that, <laughs> yeah, the history of how you sort of, you know, came to the top of competitive. And, and 
We'll just do. We'll definitely just do Team Fortress Two because yeah. I started back in the Quake days, which taught a lot of groundwork. But 2007, we we heard that Team Fortress Two was going to be a clone of Quake World Team Fortress, with a little bit of Team Fortress Classic mixed in. But a they took out bunny hopping, which we weren't very happy with. B they completely took out grenades, Names, which was yeah. travesty. They changed all these little things that completely changed the game, and it wasn't what we expected. It was very team-oriented, which back in the other games, Enemy Territory, Fortress, Quake, you could have one person destroy the other team on their own, just skill and skill alone. You can't do that in this game, so we had to actually learn how to play as a team, which was just mind-boggling. So the first six is matches that we had. We had matches before scrims even, or I guess we had scrims before a league even existed. And my team was Kronos, who was a former scout, Xerxes soldier, Motard soldier, Vayne medic, me scout, which is funny, and then a guy named Twin Cannon. And we got the double heavy band in Sivo <laughs> because we, we were playing Dust Bowl which was a match, and we went double heavy, and they couldn't oh. go past us. And we we played two four. We played the doctors. Those guys were what? sick. I think all the old people will know the doctor. We played two four. I went spy, and it was funny because I would, I would go invisible with the old invisible watch, bring the flag all the way to flag room. They would all turtle back into their base, and it would go back. Our team couldn't get out of our base because we still had that mindset of. Defense versus offense. And then the doctors really showed us, no, we're going to go into your base and chase and all that kind of stuff. But anyways, we got top three in the first SIVO placement tournament and moved over. And I went to visit my now wife in a city, and I came back, and my team had kind of been taken over by 20 ID. And they went on, and a few of us that weren't the best, because I was not the best scout, course or else i'd keep scouting but i didn't go on with them and right at that same time i got a night shift job which completely ended that but it was funny because i could play tf2 at work all night for 10 hours so i would pub and play and just try to play all the different classes and learn them because i had nothing better to do because there wasn't enough work to do and when i came back i played some eights and some highlander those are the days. You, you need to explain what eights are to people who, who are not yeah. haven't been around that long. <laughs> so, 8v8 is the classic format for Quake. Way back in the days, it was 12v12 when it was really popular, and then it moved down to 8. 8v8, 8 versus 8. Uh, oh. That's my text, Somebody sorry. <laughs> no, I so, <laughs> each team would have a bunch of different people. You'd have... Two scouts, two soldiers, two medics, a demo, spies, sniper, whatever you wanted to run, you basically could. And then UGC came along, and it narrowed it down to one. And that changed how we played, because you would sit and wait for both Ubers to build before you would ever push. It was the slowest, most boring thing ever. So that was a great thing that they changed. And then season three was the first season that was Highlander. And the ETF2L Highlander Cup really kind of pushed that because there were so many teams in it. Everyone was really excited about it. It looked really fun. One one class per person? How do you even play that? And we had no idea. So when we got into it, we were like, oh, this isn't that much different than ABA. So season three, my team, Digital Jedi, and a community server, Exodus Society, we played together all the time on their pub. And we just had a lot of fun. We would drink, we would play. And it turns out each team had about 20, 25 people that wanted to play. So instead of people just not being on a team, we made a third one called X Jedi. And I wasn't a leader. I was on D-Jedi. Only two of us joined the X Jedi team because no one else, they're either I'm going to sit or I'm not going to play. So a lot of people just sat. And I wanted to play. Ty Pilot and I, we moved over. We went 10-7 and seven that season, I think. 
And it was basically a full team of pub players and then Thai Pilot and I. And I was just really starting to learn the theory of Highlander that first season. I played scout, spy, heavy, engineer, and medic that season in different <laughs> different matches. We had 17 matches Jeez. because we were still wow. – it was the very first season. Classic mix-up was in, and it was – it was Blackie Monster and a bunch of really good guys. There were like three invites on the team and then a full sixes IM team. So that was back when there were only three invites allowed. So they got that, and then the highest they could go after that was IM. So they just destroyed everyone. They were really solid. They understood the game because of sixes, and they just dumped on everybody. And then season four started. And I, I kind of took over the team at that point and just tried to focus more on Medic. I think I still played Scout and Heavy a little bit. But we had to remove some people from the team because they really weren't good. And it, it was turning out that X-Jedi was the serious one. Exodus Society was more of the pub team. And D-Jedi was just basically going to retire anyways. So they just played. They kind of limped along. And I was steadily getting more and more of the good people. I got Napalm, who still plays on BFL, one of the top snipers, I still think, in the league. Some people think it's ridiculous, but he's amazing. I still like him. I got Stingray out of the deal. And then season five, well, season four was a, a summer. We went six and two. Not too bad. Season five, I got B-Man, who's an old invite scout. I got Tech, who's an old invite soldier. Napalm was an old invite soldier. So I was getting people that knew how to play the game. They weren't all playing on their main classes, but they knew how to play the game. And season five, we we did what we could. That was the season that Inglorious Broadcasters changed and they brought in Sizer and Tyrone and uh, somebody else that was really good. And they did they did really well. And the time they played us they beat us and that knocked us out of playoffs, but they did really well. And that taught us you have to play. And we weren't scrimmaging a lot. I think we had a match that was scheduled the weekend before the week before because they delayed it. So our, our match, our scrim night was Wednesday and that's when we played the match. So we didn't really get a scrim before playing this incredibly good team and we got dunked on. So, um, Season six, a few more people left, a few more good people came in. This guy named Ruin joined because B-Man really wanted to play Engineer. I thought he was just pulling my chain. He's like, no, Engineer is my favorite class. I want to play Engineer. I was like, you find me someone that will play it and we can do it. And he's like, well, why don't you ask Sven? I was like, okay, there's no way that Ruin's going to actually play Highlander. I asked him, he, he just said, sure. I was like, you're shitting me. You're not going to play. He's like, no, I'll play. Add me to the roster. And that's really when I learned how to play Highlander because his insights, his calls, it really made me understand more of the game. What I had learned the first few seasons were just tiny building blocks. But Ruin taught me by showing me. I would make the calls. He would make the comms. He would go into areas and say, hey, I'm in, come in now. And that taught me, listen to your flanks. Get a spy in position. We had Bone Masher as our spy, and he's playing how a lot of the spies are playing now, where they just go in, cloak and dagger, they stand there and they wait. It's something that I try to teach a lot of teams. You, uh, you go stand there, you tell your team where they are, and then you push off of that. If you're running crits, that's the biggest thing you can do. Because you know where they are, your first sticky is going to go right in their face. They usually won't have time to react. Gully washes is very important. And the biggest match we had that season was versus Gangsta Gang Gaming, and they had Blaze as scout, exceptionally good. Yep. And we ended up beating them. And that was really kind of hit or miss because we weren't expected to win, so just kind of shit on us the entire match. So when it came out of it, I felt awful because all I was getting during the whole game was hiding your shit, blah, 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 blah. Cause people were just <laughs> saying it, repeating what the casters were saying about us. Oh really? So when we, when we won, 
it didn't feel like we won. And then season seven, we were like, screw it. We're not really going to take this serious. And well, back to season six, the one, the one match we won was steel steel this season. I think is going to be the same way in platinum where any team that plays it can win it just like gravel. Mm -hmm. And we lost to tangerine who later became Ginyu force with a mix of bonus, you know, very good team. We switched our strategy the third round. Our engineer B-Man decided, I'm just going to put a gun at E. We're going to skip B, and they just walk through us. So don't change your strats, especially if it's one-to-one. -one. Cheers, B-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Call out. Season, season 7, 8 we all off-class. Almost everybody off-class except me because I still had to make calls. Yep. And then most of those guys just kind of... They didn't really want to play anymore. Ruin said he was done. Seagull said he was done. Tech was done. Stingray was done. Like, literally the whole team was finished. Bone Master was done. I was like, okay, cool. We'll do something else. And then Valen messaged me. And Stabby Stabby messaged me. And was like, hey, we're reforming the Syndicate into a new, better team. And we want you to come in and do what you did season six and season seven. Mm -hmm. I said, all right. Let's do it. And then a week or two later, Ruin joined in, and the team was kind of set from there. Once he joined, we had the same nine play almost every single scrim and almost every single match, mm -hmm. unless somebody was out. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a huge team. And so the Syndicate, obviously, that's a name that a lot of people know, even if they weren't maybe around at the time. And uh, there was this whole ETF2L uh, show match that you were wanting to uh to talk about too, which kind of plays into the, the whole team coming together at that time and, and how people view you and stuff. And we have a poster, I think, that hopefully Pretender can show uh, in some way on there. But uh, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, I do, actually. And <laughs> we, we attacked this match the same way we attacked a Platinum Grand Finals. We knew that there was so much on the line with this because the Euros always thought they were the best in everything they ever did. The funny thing is, I played uh, Enemy Territory Fortress back in the day, and Tech, one of the guys I was talking about, he and I played on a team from America in Europe, and we beat their team in their league. <laughs> so that was so when we went into this, I was like, these guys are normal people. They are gamers just like us. And the, the best thing about this show match was almost all of the team was West, except for me and TMP. And TMP was in Dallas. So when we played the Euros on a New York server, almost everyone's pings were in the hundreds, like the low hundreds. One of the, a few of the Euro guys pinged better than our guys did. <laughs> wow. So it was, it was very, very even. But they still wanted to do one of their rounds on Europe, of course, and we we played as best we could. I think we still lost it. I think that was our granary one, but every round was very close. Their guys are amazing. Kytus, I still think if I if I had a team that I could pick everybody on it, Kytus would be my demo. He's mm -hmm. exceptionally good. Tweak, their sniper is very good. Alex or ALX, their heavy had been known as the best heavy in the world. They were undefeated for two or three years, at least. No one ever came close because they were all high prem level players, and they they just got it. They understood the game. I remember watching some of some of their matches and just watching how they pushed as a team, how they played off of each other. You could tell the communication that would come out, and you knew when someone called spy because everyone would just turn around. And I learned a lot from watching tons and tons and tons of demos. Over those years that I was working, I would just sit and watch demos and learn Jeez. sixes, eights. It's better than TV for me. And uh, when we played them, there you go. One of the guys made <laughs> a little just bit caught up there. on the stream. Uh, <laughs> the sucker, the closer, but that's the idea. Sucker was one of the best medics. People make fun of me a lot for dropping. But, you know, everybody makes fun of a lot of medics for drugs. Medics, yeah. Especially in you Europe, just, actually. You can't get away from it. But Sucker was amazing. Alex was amazing. Linus is amazing. 
I had to really avoid Linus as a jumper because he would avoid going for any other kill. He would just jump and go for me. And I, I kind of learned from that from season five. There's a team called Target Sucks. Their soldiers named Cress. They're really good friends. And I've found that when I play against friends, their main goal is to kill me and taunt me. Well, yeah, so you're the medic. Cress, Cress would yeah. always do that. Even if he knew he immediately die. That's where I got the bind worth it. Because you dive in <laughs> and you taunt someone. It's totally worth it. That's where I got it from. <laughs> and... Playing these guys, it was, it was just so. They're very good. They're they're the same as as we are as gamers. We were very even on the skill level. I think we played a map that they didn't know, but you would never know by the way they played because they adapted so quickly. So that really, I think that really gained the Highlander community a lot of exposure. Mm -hmm. Because it was the undefeated team versus this team that was basically brand new. And when I first heard that we were doing it, I was like, there's no way that we're going to beat them. Because we were in, like, the the second or third week. And as a team, we were about four or five weeks as a team. And we were doing well. We were beating American teams. But I was like, these guys have been together forever. We're going to get destroyed. And then I stopped, I stopped myself. I was like, why do I have that defeatist attitude? Why do I think we're going to lose? And I went through their roster and we go, okay, well, this is how Tweak plays. We're going to counter him with Scout Spy Soldier. You guys are going to jump him as much as you can. That's going to free up me and Polk where we don't have to watch out for being shot all the time. We can spy check more. That shut down Hurry. That shut down Tweak. And then we could really focus on a lot more. Mm -hmm. That helped us on Viaduct. Now, that didn't help me avoid Kytus' cabers. <laughs> There's no avoiding those. No, you, you can't. No. You can't avoid those. He's yeah. very solid. Still yeah. solid. Still playing uh, today. But you were saying that that yeah. tournament sort of helped you guys to understand um, where you stood, I guess, and where sort of, um, <clears throat> I guess, the platinum, where you guys stood among platinum and uh, going forward, I guess. Like, what were... How about the, the last couple seasons where you played? Because uh, you played up until about season nine, right? In UGC? As a starter, uh, yeah. at least? Yeah, season nine. I, uh, I didn't so much play for the Syndicate anymore. And I'll, I'll go ahead and be upfront about what happened because I think there's a lot of shit that went around. And I was removed from the Syndicate. TMP and Polk both will have left. They were not kicked. But what happened with our team is. When, I, when I'm in game mode, I am serious. I want everybody to focus. Everything has to be just so, because when you're in certain situations, you need to be on point or else you're going to relax, you're going to screw up. So they never saw this ridiculous side of me because when we had scrims, I was serious. When we had matches, I was serious. So they thought that I was too serious, kind of an asshole, I guess. Because I would call people out on things, not in a really negative way, but you if you ever point something out to anybody, they're going to take it the wrong way sometimes. Mm -hmm. But the good thing about the syndicate is they didn't take it the wrong way. They just didn't want to hear it sometimes. But they would always change what I said, and we always mm -hmm. succeeded. Big thing was on Granary. TMP... One of the best pyros in the league, I still think. I would love to play with him again. But everyone knows he's very aggressive. When he plays aggressive, he gets tons of kills. If he's away from the pocket, he's not protecting the medic and the heavy. Mm -hmm. So what was happening was he was going off and getting kills on scouts and spies and those kind of things, but I was dying. I was like, TMP, why don't you play near me and I'll give you the Ubers? We will push with you. We're, we'll go from there. We went from kind of stagnating like process to immediately rolling. And when I talked to him about it, he's like, I didn't even realize that because he's just used to destroying everyone. He's not used to being on teams that could support him. So when we supported him, A, he got all of his kills. He still did very well, and he protected us. From the match after Granary on, he always stayed with me. I didn't have to say a word to him. 
and he got some of the best Ubers. We had some of the best pushes. I would split off of him to ruin or off of him to soup. We had, we had so many options for what we could do, and everyone knew if I'm near, I might get the Uber and I might be the push. We never set certain things, and they, they just saw me as the leader. They didn't, they didn't realize that I set up all the scrims, I talked to all the other teams, I ran over strategies, created strategies, basically. And strats, as Huey Lewis always pointed out, your strats are not that impressive. Agree. They, they may not be. Executing those strategies is the hard part because what we would do, we would split almost every single time on a push. That is very hard to execute. It might look easy on paper. I agree. But no one really understood that until season nine. They brought Hildreth in around October and he was going to replace me. But then they thought it over and they kept me. And I'm, I'm thankful they kept me. But then season nine, Stabby was afraid that I was going to try to take over the team because I don't really know why, why he thought that. Cause I was happy with how it was. I wasn't even technically a team leader. I just was a leader. Mm. So he and Valen, I think, kind of ended that. And I just jumped from there. And Moose got sick of playing. He got sick of playing Medic, even though he was still learning how to play Medic. So he hadn't mastered it. But he was like, sorry, he was done with Soldier. And he wanted to play Medic. Hey, I was like, well, <laughs> I'm not on team. I might as well. So... <laughs> I was like, well, I want to play soldier, so this kind of works out. But he never wanted to listen to anything I was saying when I was trying to help him out and try to say, hey, stop standing in sniper lines. That's just beyond reason. And he he never really learned. And then Stabby Stabby, halfway through the season, Message me. I was like, hey, uh, would you consider joining the syndicate again? I was like, are you serious? He's like, yeah, things are not really working out with our our current medic. And then I quickly got messages from Hero, who would replace Ruin. Mm -hmm. I got messages from Fathom, the pyro that replaced TMP. And Valen, a few different guys, because Valen had quit Top Gluttons to go join TS to try to make them good again. And I had a majority of the team message me, and deep down I was like, yes, I want to do this just so I can say, hey, yeah, I did it. But I didn't want to leave plus forward, even though no one scrimmed, everybody didn't care. For some reason, I wanted to stay. And I ended up staying, and then within a few weeks, Moose got back banned. Yeah. And that vaulted me out of playing soldier brought in a backup soldier who hadn't played all season and it put me on medic and if you've ever played medic before it's it's very difficult if you don't know the players and it was basically like playing medic in a pickup game because half the team didn't play during the season they chose other things for it so when i came in and i was trying to lead it like i had the syndicate like, hey, let's push here, let's go. And then I realized our heavy was very passive. We didn't want to be very aggressive. We had pretty good talent, but it didn't mesh with how I was used to playing. If I had been brought in as medic from the very start, which I didn't want to do, so it didn't, didn't matter. If I had, I could have taught them, here's how we do this push. Here's how you focus on this. Blah, blah, blah. And we kind of got some of that down, but it wasn't enough. And we ended up getting fourth, which we should have probably got second. Mm -hmm. And I don't have any bad blood with anybody on the syndicate. I still talk with them. Some of them I don't talk to as much anymore, but I talk to Stabby all the time. I talk to Valen. I mean, I was on Gentleman's Club for a bit because I asked Valen mm -hmm. if he wanted another backup. <laughs> and that kind of got squashed because... Um, 20B disbanded. Yeah. And 
just like what I would do, because Valen messaged me up front. He was like, hey, I got to remove you. It's nothing personal, but 20B just disbanded. I got to pick up Deadbolt, Paragon, Pretzel, Ash. Yeah. And then he had to remove me, Snake, Kryptonite, Mike, I think, and Hildreth. All four of us got removed. <laughs> and to me, that's a huge win. That's good for him that yeah. he got him. You got dropped from a team. Oh, wow. You got Crack replaced. Up. That's the first time I've been dropped, but I completely understand. And I didn't have time to start. I still really don't because all the mentoring I'm doing already, it's it takes up all of my time. It yeah, well, let's, let's get to that. Uh, sorry, want, you, you go, Kip. I want to get to that, the mentoring. <laughs> um, I want to say one thing first, which is, people, if you have questions, put your questions in the Twitch chat. We want to remind you that at the end of all of this stuff, DJ is going to be taking your questions for Hein, hopefully. Yep, yep. Hopefully not for any no, of wait, us, because we're boring. I wanted to say something first before okay. I... Okay. Let's all say things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. But yeah, put your questions in Twitch chat, and DJ's collecting them so that at the end yep. we're gonna ask them all uh, and 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 get all those questions in. And now Kip's gonna talk. Okay. Well, I just wanted to talk about the mentoring first. Like, what brought you to mentoring? Um, if you can kind of talk about your hindsight things and how that developed out of your play, and then how you made that transition to more of a mentor. And I also want to know, like, do you enjoy it? Do you like talking to these noobs and stuff? <laughs> uh, <laughs> So yeah, just introduce us to that a little. Super noobs. Super noobs. How did that start? Um, it probably started season six when we won. I would I would get people adding me, and they would just ask questions. I was like, well, here's what it is, with my normal style of four paragraphs of an answer, because there's option after option after option. Because when I answer something, I don't want to just say, oh, you do this. Because in a situation, they're going to do that one thing. And then, oh, it doesn't work? Well, Heinz an idiot. So I would always give them four or five different options. And if one didn't work, you try the next. Mm. And that kind of slowly moved because more and more were asking about it. And then it turned into I wasn't just mentoring a person. I was mentoring their medic. means I've got to work with their combo. i got to work with the heavy, the demo, the pyro. And once that happened, that was four people on the team. Then it slowly spread to all nine people. I was like, okay, well, I, I'm now mentoring an entire team. How about we just all get in a server, everybody go spec, I'll go over everybody's classes, because I had played basically a class in Platinum. So I knew what I like to see as, as a leader, and I knew what worked in Platinum. So moving that down to steel, I would always preface everything with, you guys are not platinum. You don't have the skill to do this. But the more you play as a team, the skill doesn't matter as much. Now, you look at a team like 20B. Yeah. Those guys are good, but on paper, they were not better than three or four of the other teams in platinum when they won everything. Mm. What that reminds me of is the syndicate. And a lot of people called us a super team, but Ruin and I were the only guys that had ever been number one. Villain had never played. Uh, actually, Fathom was as well. Shout out to Fathom. I know you're in there. Fathom was our season six pyro, season seven pyro. And everybody other than that, they had, as far as I know, they had never been top four, top five, top six, if that. Individually skilled, they all had great skill. So when we all came together, just like 20B, it just, everybody meshed. They knew, oh, you're doing this? Well, I got to do to counter that. Adaptability was huge. Everybody just worked together as a team. So I, when I would mentor a team, I would talk about that. And I would mm -hmm. say, you guys, you pair off. Scout soldier, you guys go off this way. You're watching the flank. That's two sets of eyes watching an area. If one of you dies, the other one should pull back or call what killed you. And then the combo rotates over and helps. If you two stay alive and someone else dies on the other side, you hear that communication, just like on Badwater. Second point defense. Two people on the cart path, two people back in the trash, everybody else on the roof watching both stairs. Everything is watched. Communication 
is number one in everything I do with mentoring. Hmm. So season six, I had one or two teams. I was like, okay, well, I can kind of, I can kind of do this, you know. I can still play and I can go. <laughs> season seven, we didn't, we didn't have a single scrim. Season seven at all, because it was summer. We just wanted to have fun, just kind of mess fun. around. It was, and it was. There were a lot of interesting season, maps. Season. Yeah. It was fun at the time. People still complained about maps, but my team didn't. My team was like, we're going to play, we're going to go. We had all played for years. We didn't care about the maps. We just go in and learn it and play it, just like old school days. But it got to the point where I was mentoring four or five teams, and I was like, this is getting kind of ridiculous. I'm wasting five or six plus hours doing saying the exact same thing. And I talked to Moose and was like, you do your Moose tracks. Why don't you host me a site or a video series? And we work together. Kind of like you asked me the questions that the mentees ask. And then I answer them and I show it. And it, it worked. Mm -hmm. They're long. They're as long as every single mentor session was. Mm -hmm. What I should have done is split it up into each class had its own one. So each one's, 10 minutes long, something like that. Put them and all in their own playlist so that everyone put can them do all them as they want to. Exactly. Yep. Now, what good. you could have done, they're, they're extremely <laughs> informative, but they're very long. It's just like reading a manual. It's boring. I tried to not make it boring, but, you know, I can't do anything about it. But what he was going to do is put the description in and timestamp everything. Going over scout offense this point, sniper offense, blah, 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 all the way through. And it happened like once or twice. <laughs> and I realized that we had kind of hit it a little bit big because we were having it translated into different languages. They were doing captions on the bottom really? to wow. say what I was saying. I was like, wow, this is, That's crazy. <laughs> this is really cool. So I put a little more effort into it. Now, the problem was I would send these to my mentee teams and they'd be like, okay, the, that was really cool. Now go over it with our team. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. So I would just kind of cater it directly to them. Your carry is your scout. He's the best person on your team. So you give him tons of heals. On payload, he's not sitting on the cart. You get your soldier who gets four frags a game. You put him with pain train. He pushes the cart. And it works. That actually does work very well because he can constantly shoot. And uh, it just kind of went from there. People would be like, yeah, I watched the hindsight, whatever. Okay, go with it, our team. And it was like I was starting to make these bland mentoring sessions because I was just getting tired of it. And season eight, it peaked. Mm -hmm. Everyone really wanted me to mentor their team. They saw what we were doing halfway through. We were just destroying everybody. Uh, we lost a scrim to bonus on Viaduct, which was an eye-opener to us, and I, I welcomed it. Max destroyed us, and Hay destroyed us, two of the best players on their classes. And we lost. Some people got mad. I was like, guys, we've lost one scrim this whole season. What can we learn from this? We're final we finally lost. Yay. They played better than us. We made a lot of mistakes. Don't blame anybody else. The whole team screwed up. Mm -hmm. How do we fix this? And we got in the map and we talked about it. We fixed our issues. And then we played IFA Reborn, who's another really solid team with a very good sniper and scout. That's where it came up with the scout soldier. You guys go get the sniper. And then we can focus on the spot. So, so Hein, I got like a good, uh, I got like a good, like uh casting, not casting, uh, teaching teaching question so like pretend i'm like a i'm like a low level steel team right uh you cost like a thousand dollars an hour or something like that <laughs> million isn't I, it million i wish i wish i could charge i tell i'm at to the point where i don't have to mentor teams but so far people are a little bit more giving this season than they have been in the past like one of the teams wanted to get me a gold black box because that's all i play with anymore is black uh, box and I went out and I got one for myself because I didn't know they were actually going to do it. And they were pissed. So they, were actually, <laughs> they were actually mad that I got one. And they ended up giving me a collector's 
gunboats. Wow. Oh, really? Wow. Everybody just chipped in, and it was really neat. It was, I, I appreciate it a lot. I've had a team give me buds. Another team gave me um, a professional original, which is really cool. One one of the other teams that I just picked up actually PayPal'd me 10 bucks for the mentor session. Like, nice. I, could, uh, I could do this. <laughs> Before okay, the in season, like my, like, you know. In like my like theoretical like steel team, right? We're really impatient and we're really super greedy. So we don't we won't want to figure out um, what better teams do. We want to like immediately start winning in like the lowest effort way possible. <laughs> so how would how would you do that? Watch the videos. Uh, I tell yeah, I guess everybody, so. A lot of people have said they do watch the hindsights or they try to. <laughs> so what I do and I wrote a bunch of articles on ev yeah, pretty much every map that we play. Those are good too. I've used those also. It places yeah. it's a lot easier to follow than just watching a hindsight. It takes probably 15 20 minutes to read through. Mm -hmm. You can read just your class and you know exactly what you should and shouldn't do. There's some vague stuff in there. You can it's kind of like build your own team. You can do whatever you want as long as it's within these kind of vague guidelines. And then lower down, it's the team. Your team does this. So you read your set, and then you read as a team what you should be doing. Medics, I would say, medic, you read everything because you need to know what everyone does. There's a lot of really small things that everyone needs to know. Sorry, I keep needing to burp. Um, go for it. <laughs> there we go. That beer. It's not, yeah. I think that it's not a classy it's... stream. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I have them read the article, watch the video, and then once they do that, I will um, kind of watch them scrim. I'll sit and spec and coach what they do. And I don't I, – I haven't had the issue of someone saying get out of spec in the last few seasons because mm. they know who I am. And generally what happens is as the scrim is going on, I'll get – a few of their team, or the other team, they will add me and say, <laughs> hey, what can I work on? As if I had watched them play. Which, right. Sometimes I did, sometimes I didn't. But they would say, hey, what can I work on? And I would just be like, well, you work on this and this and this. You're not doing bad. Nobody generally does bad. I, I never want to be negative to anybody when it comes to this. Because if you start telling someone you're bad, it's going to immediately, they're going to feel defeated. They never think they're going to be able to do anything. I don't what know, that's how I get do, better. What you have to do is play on compliments and then tell them you can work on this. You're good for your level, but I want you to be this level. You're in steel, I want you to play like silver. I want you to be that guy that carries your team as mm -hmm. every class. Mm -hmm. And so, some people, mm -hmm. I'll give them goals like 15 kills a match. If they get it, great. If not, you know, keep working on it. So when you're not getting the the really nice weapons or the earbuds or the the cash through PayPal, um, how is this swag. worth it? Yeah, all the swag, you know, <laughs> the cars, the ladies, um, your wife. Um, how does this, <laughs> I don't know, it just seems like so often um, people who are community members who do stuff for the lower levels, it's so often unappreciated and it goes unnoticed and it gets to the point where it's just it's like uh, self-deprecating like you're just you're putting yourself through torment does it ever begin to get that way with you or do you continue to enjoy teaching these same things over and over and over again every team is different every match is different every scrim is different that's why I still play I, I love the game. I've tried to get away from it numerous times just to find something else to do. But when you know a game and you love a game, it's it's okay. And a lot of some okay. teams don't pay me at all. And those teams I still help. Mm -hmm. I still I still want them to succeed. And I think that's just like mm -hmm. me feeding into them what I never had. When I was playing or when I was learning, I never had that guy that was there to help me that said, hey, you should work on this. 
if you do this, this is going to save you five months of doing the wrong <laughs> thing until you learn it. Yeah. So I that's what I wanted. I craved it basically. It wasn't like a I had a terrible childhood. I always wanted. <laughs> that's what it sounds like. <clears throat> yeah, maybe it was. It was uh, that's really nobody different. knew how to play TF2 when I grew up. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it helped out. I was the man. Uh, uh, the well, I back in my into, day, there was no well, I got into competitive. League, so. it was, it's because of Hein that I got into comp in the round robin tournament. Yeah, you were one of his mentees. Do you want to talk about how terrible he is? He's awful. <laughs> Can we get him in here to talk about it? No, it was, <laughs> it was amazing. The Part of the reason, uh, Miss Kip and Mr. Hein, big reason I'm here. Um, I think we could talk all night, couldn't we? But we, uh, we've hit an hour already. Do we want to talk about next week's map? Yeah, we should, we should very quickly, if you could make a, a hindsight in like 15 minutes, uh, and you had to cover like all the most important things in those 15 minutes, and it was all about Borneo R RC3, no other map, Borneo RC3, what would you be? But do it in two minutes. But, yeah, really, like two minutes. Really <laughs> it doesn't have to be two minutes, but you you yeah, know a lot about Borneo. That's what we gotta do. Is special talent? Oh, just so much. No, we, we can do it. We can do positive. whatever you want. If you fly through the map, I can push it forward. Or are we doing this this time? Because I saw it during Hildris with process, which is cool. Okay, so what's like the most? I don't know if we're point. set up to fly through it, but we can just talk about it. Yeah. What is the Generate most important part? Up, I, think. I can go <laughs> one through four because there's four caps. The first area. Right, most defense, important cap, though. Most offense or defense? Uh, the last one to... for offense because you got to win. Uh, sure. If you don't get the last one. Right. It's kind of hard to win. So this is third point. Oh, I can't do this off the delay. So can we can this? pretend. Okay. No, I'll just do it through. I'm just talking about it. The sure. first point is it's a first point that you don't want to hold forever because it's impossible. The second one is the one that you can hold forever. The third one is one that you can hold forever. The last one is a lot harder to hold forever because he made a lot of really good changes. So what you want to do is put up as strong a front on the first area as you can, but escape to two as quickly as you can. Get set up. If your medic dies at first, it really doesn't matter because by the time they've pushed the slow cart all the way back, you'll have Uber again, you'll have crits again, whatever you want to do. They're pushing through a very small choke. So force them to go slow. Get your stickies out. Get your sniper in place. Heal him up where they can't kill him easily. Push it. Push it as a team or you're not going to be able to get it. On defense, you want to just delay them as much as possible. That's the key to payload. Delay. The th in between three and two is basically a dead zone where you can try to hold it well mainly up on the roof area you can but it's it's one of those where if you get wiped there you're gonna lose three and you're probably gonna lose four it's not the same as one and two there's not as big of a, a difference in them. yeah so be smart about when you back out and play it clever listen to your comms don't complain. Don't whine about how you died. No one but you cares about that. Ever. If you're muddying up comms, there's a good chance that someone else called something intelligent and you were too busy complaining. Hmm. Just, just shut up. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Those, are the, those people are the worst. Like, I've played with up. so many of them. Yeah, the ones who talk all the time just don't shut up and Broadcast. they're just yeah, continuing they're just... talking. <laughs> uh, this map was made by Sean. A few years ago, I remember playing it long ago and thought it was gorgeous. And then Valen got involved with making a pro version of it. Very cool. And Valen messaged me. Because Valen made the pro version of Viaduct. And he wanted to work on this because I had worked on the pro version of Barn Blitz, which the last point still sucks, but, you know, we're getting there. <laughs> and we made a lot of really solid changes on this map. It's way better than it was before. It was a great pub map, but it was bad competitive. So we did a lot of a lot of work with Sean, and then we had a certain set. It was done. We're like, okay, this is it. That's good. And then Sean's like, well, we can make some more changes. He and Valen w worked on it a lot more without me. I gave my two cents, and then I had a job. I had to kind of bounce from helping. And then Red Rum stepped in. 
And then Red Rum set up this testing team, yeah. and it's just amazing because mm-hmm. he gets all these gold and platinum teams to play in it, and they really got good sets. It was full team versus full team. It wasn't pickup games, and these teams knew how to play. So when they would go back to spec, he's amazing. He's, he was involved. So Shout when it got to back to him... testing teams, by the way. Good yeah. No joke. So when it got back to that, he would know, okay, this didn't work, this this worked a little better, let's tweak this, and then when Red Rum and Valen talked to him, or when I would just randomly hop in, he would go, okay, I know this works because I saw it. When some people are trying to do map testing, they're just like, here's my opinion, I'm a, pro, I'm a professional player, so it works because I said so. That doesn't work. It Map makers don't care what competitive players think half the time. They're thinking, I want this to be very popular on pubs. Sean mm. is very different, and it's very great that he did this. TMP yeah. is changing. I, don't, I think he's making some normal maps, but I'm trying to talk yeah, to him TMP to make some good TMP said he was working on a map last week, or two weeks yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah, he's been streaming it. Cool. All right, do you think, Hein, you could uh, take some rapid-fire uh, viewer questions? Uh, rapid-fire. Yeah, rapid do fire. it. Okay. So, uh, first couple of questions. Uh, we had a great question from Gak. Uh He wants to know, how do you come up with so many unique and comprehensive strategies? He says they're very useful, and almost all of them seem to work very well and are very well thought out. Oh, that's so cute. Thanks. I appreciate that. That's why, that's why I make them. I want people to really use them. My brain works in a very analytical way. I'm not creative at all, but... <laughs> When I think of when I think of strategy, I've been sorry, I've been doing this this kind of stuff since basically 2000 when I started. I'd always think of ways. Oh well, their main defense is sitting here. Well, I'm going to throw a concussion grenade through the wall and it'll knock them off the platform oh. into the lava. That's where it all started. Right. And when lava. you go from there, it's to me it's just natural. I type it out or I talk about it, I can visualize what I've already seen. This is what worked. This is what I've seen work. So I just type it out and do it. All right, cool. All right, the next question we have is from someone who is also a mentor. He wants to know, what do I do? This is Grizz. Uh, He wants to know, what do I do if a team or player doesn't make changes and refuses to change incorrect gameplay? Shoutouts to Grizz. Grizz, best sci-fi player ever. Uh, I'm actually, I'm actually kind of dealing with that right now, and you've got to think, I don't know if yours is similar to mine, I've dealt with both kinds, there's the kind that thinks they are too good already, and they don't want to listen to you, which is probably the worst one, because that's a terrible attitude, the second one is the people that really want to learn, and they really want to try, but they don't have the deathmatch skills, to support the strategy. The third one is they don't want to listen, they don't care what you say, they're also not good. (laughs) I don't know which one you're dealing with, but you never want to be that mentor that says, kick them off the team, they're poison, Mm. whatever. The only people that I have really ever said, get this person off the team or your team will die, is that toxic personality where during matches, they are yelling at people, they're cussing at people, they're talking down to them. You never want that in any situation, ever. That's why I hate the forums so much. Where it because causes it's just, that. It's just bullshit. Mm. So All the right. first one is, your first, sorry, I'll finish this off and then we'll go from there. So you said it's the number one person. That means they think they're too good for the team. Um, talk to the leaders. If they are good, great. They can just make their own problems. Let the leaders see that they're not listening, that they're not Mm. supporting the team. Go from there. Let them make that decision. Because I know mentors that in the past have really pushed to have someone kicked off the team, and they kicked them before they even had anybody else. Mm. And it killed the team, basically, because they were so vehement about it. The leaders were like, well, you're a mentor. You know, you have a very high profile as a mentor, you wouldn't be asked. 
just don't um, don't use your <laughs> your powers for bad. Let them make their own decision. All right. Good, not All evil. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we've got uh, how many more questions do we want to do? I have two more that I picked up. Oh, uh, let's do one more, I say. Oh. Okay, so then I wanted to do the fun one, but these are all really good questions that I've gotten. <laughs> no fun uh, allowed. No. Oh. <laughs> so we've got a question from Lollery123. Uh, wants to know specifically, Hein, as medic in Highlander, what can you do to milk Ubers more and stop from getting forced a lot? Hmm. Positioning. That's a good question. Hmm. Positioning is one of the things that I teach a lot in the hindsight videos as well as kind of more private things with medics. You, you can milk sometimes, but usually what happens is while you're milking, you're only healing one person. Mm -hmm. If you do that too long, you're not spreading your heels out because you're just so tunnel vision on looking at their health. You're looking at their health go all the way down, and then you pop, and you've lost two or three other people. Mm. So more often than not, you want to be in a position that allows you to dictate who ubers first. If you're on defense, you always want them to uber first. If you're on offense, you want to find ways to make them uber first. You need to be able to dictate every situation as best you can. Find plays to do that. Go for picks, spies, demo jumps, soldier jumps, scout flanks. You distraction up front and then have your spy decloak and get a stab. Distraction is key. Positioning is huge. Turn those things all three together, and your team's going to be very difficult to beat. Cool. Right. You should ask the fun question. Okay, yeah, fun question. Anyway. This one should it's be a beard. lot of fun. It, yeah, it's about it, I've it got a lot of beard questions. The stupidity <laughs> wants to know, what what do you do to get such florious, I like that word, florious facial hair? Is that a word? <laughs> oh, is that I think it was a mistype of glorious. Glorious. I like glorious better. Glorious. I like, glorious. Better. I like it better. Um, so I did not always have a beard. There, there was a time where this did not connect at all. Uh, this didn't really grow in. This was early 20s. So what you do is when you're in high school, as I did, you start off with just sideburns. You shave everything else. These grow a little bit thicker. As you get older, this grows in a little bit more. And then you shave everywhere else. And then you just kind of work. Shave down <laughs> here. Sight. Shave down here makes this thicker. Shave above it makes it grow in more there. And then just stop at that point. <laughs> you can't do anything about the mustache. But that kind of forces your face to compensate. think that it's still growing. <laughs> yeah, it kind of forces it to oh, compensate. Boy. Oh wow! My brother has a good beard. My dad has a good beard, so it's probably just genetics. But that's your, that's your hindsight more... on beard growing. Yeah. Women on this team start charging for that. Spring. There you go. Oh boy, is it is it that time of the, the stream now that we get to ask about your special talent? Uh, it is that time of the yeah. stream now. Talent. So what do you so got for Hein? What can you do, Heineken? I don't know if this is exactly a talent, but it is a skill and. Me and my neighbor brew beer. That's a skill. And we made a Saison Brett beer. I don't know how many you can drink, but it's one of the higher level beers that's like 10% alcohol. So you just what? drink one and you're that's good to beer? go. That's a beer. It's it's a you made that? That's legal for you to make that? You can make it. Is it anti freeze? So, do you use it on your car in the mornings in the winter? <laughs> nah. This beer that I was drinking is called a Long Strange Triple from Boulevard Brewery. It's a, one of their Stackhouse series. It's one of those that you drink one of and you're like, okay. Well, that's the same as so is that six or seven Bud Lights. Stop. A Long Strange Triple sounds like a soldier move a little bit. That was a long, strange triple. Have that you ever joke. done a drunk was... hindsight or tried to mentor while inebriated? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not a hindsight, but I have mentored while drunk. One of the most fun ones, it wasn't exactly mentor. I was playing with Sarcasm and the clan Silent Riot one night, and I was drinking vodka and Pepsi, and <laughs> Sarcasm was drinking Jack Daniels and Kahlua, which sounds disgusting. What? But... He was playing medic, and 
Pink Bandit was playing heavy, and they had three or four people on their team, and I said, if I kill your medic, you all drink. If you <laughs> kill me, I drink. And then that is a great their, their soldier, oh, yeah. Van, who has a very hideous hat, Donovan, your hat's ugly. Hate it. <laughs> it's actually, it's like yellow, yellow plasma. It's fine. But we make, we give him shit. But he also joined my team because he's got a ninth grade hearing level and doesn't listen at all. So he joined my team and tried to help me kill the medic. So after an hour or so, we were just all just smashed. It was so fun because I would try to rock jump around. It wouldn't do anything after a while. And then I just, I just left after a while. You're my right. my neighbor came by, the brewer came by, and he wanted me to try beers at his house, so I just kind of left. I didn't tell him anything. I just walked away. <laughs> <laughs> like, I realized long, I hadn't uh, anything. So, How long have you done the brewing for? Two. How long have you done uh, the brewing? I've done the brewing for about a year. We won our first competition oh. Um, oh, wow. during summer. So you're and the award-winning hind. Award winning. I've won I've won some stuff. And the funny thing is, while we were brewing it, a rabbit died in their backyard and we found it because their dog got it. So we named it uh Wabbit Saison Ale. <laughs> we wanted to name it actually. Dead I thought you were going somewhere else with the dead rabbit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it died in the vat or something. A weird taste. Oh, that would be disgusting. Yeah. Hmm. Wabbit Saison. It was very good. It's very sweet, kinda of malty. So not only do you have those TF2 offer twenty-one trophies. older. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you have Just brewing trophies in- and TF2 trophies together. That's not saying a whole lot because back in Quake, I was on a team called Blood of the Fold, and it was a ladder system. It wasn't a season, and every single week you defended your title, and we held the title in two different leagues for about five or six months in a row. Wow, nice. So we won forever. It was it was a lot of fun. That kind of taught me about confidence and I get a lot of shit about being confident but when you're Liquid playing confidence. when you're playing at the top level you have to have confidence you can't second guess yourself yeah well and, I, people you know, understand now that uh, if they want to get drunk once they're 21 years old they just get on TF2 and, uh, and play with you a little bit that's how to do it <laughs> I will play only when you're 21 drunk. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I think we're at the end here now that's all our questions and everything uh Shoutouts time, what do we got? Turbo? Shoutouts to Shaquille O'Neal, as always. Best TF2 player of all time. Yeah, we, uh, we probably could have sat here and talked to Hein for about five hours, I think, but uh, we want to keep it, it YouTube-sized. Yeah. But yeah. But yeah. And then Hein, do you have anything, anyone you want to shout-out to? Yeah. Uh, any last shout messages? To, shout-out to Silent Riot, one team I mentor. Shout-out to TNS, another team, Bart and Gold. Shout out to all my guys in Platinum, all my old uh, looking handsome guys. I think somebody asked what happened with that. I can type that out once the stream's over. Looking handsome was a a troll name. No, really? So not placed in reality at all. Yeah, Yeah, somebody asked asked where the name came from. The tag was hyphen looking, which is what people would type when they were looking for a team. It was before the LFT thing. Uh, Uh, So I I wanted to make a play on that. Okay. And I was like, well, we can just make it on that. Another thing I came up with last season was LFT, which is the same stupid joke, but it would be, do you even lift? And that was <laughs> Oh, do you even very LFT? bad. That's so cute. Good time, I good time to end it. Yeah. <laughs> With that horrible. was so funny. <laughs> All right, well, I think well, that's, uh, that's it. For you want to yeah. end it off, Kipster? Okay. Uh, I guess we'll sign off. So, yeah, so once again, big shout out and thank you to Pretender who is able to step in on our streaming duties yep. tonight. We really, really appreciate it. Shout out to Rock Cole who was not able to do it today, but is usually our production manager. Um, thanks so much for uh, thanks so much to XTV for hosting us here on behalf of Turbocop, Getaway DJ, myself. We also want to give a huge thank you to Hine for not only uh, appearing tonight, but also everything you do to the community for the past years. Um, and like uh, Gabriel said, um, be personally influenced me in getting into competitive TF2 and I know we're not the only ones so uh, seriously thank you for 
many years of, uh, of greatness. Um, we do want to encourage you guys to hit that subscribe button on uh, both the YouTube for XTV and also for XTV Esports Twitch channel. Uh, make sure you follow us and catch all of our Platinum Highlander cast on Monday nights at 9.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, definitely join us next week for Borneo. See some of the action of that map that Hein talked about. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching, and have a good night. Good luck.